They can't handle the truth, and they're not even curious about the truth. It's pretty amazing what's happening right now. You know, at one point, media bias, it really kind of just amused me. It was so obvious, and uh, I don't know why they did it. Uh, I didn't think it was to their best interests or the people's best interests, but they did it, and I just kind of lived with it. Right now, though, it's different. Because if you're not making a concerted effort to watch Newsmax or to listen to talk radio, you're going to think that Joe Biden has clinched this thing because that's what they say over and over and over again. They want you to think that Donald Trump is crazy, this is all coup, and this is all unconstitutional. None of that is true. It's really quite straightforward. Everything <laughs> is permissible that the president is doing. It's within the law. It's within the Constitution. These folks are... Well, a lot of them are lying, deliberately distorting the truth. And it's sad. It was a mystery to me. Now, I want to go back to 2000 for a second. Who remembers the Florida recount, right? That was a great story. Remember that guy checking the chads and all that stuff? The whole country was watching, and it was exciting. You know why it was such a story, though? Because the Democrat, Al Gore, had a shot at winning. We have a different situation right now. The Republican... Donald Trump has a shot at winning, and they hate Donald Trump. And that's why they're not making a horse race out of this thing. All about horse race journalism until now, until this moment. And that's interesting. It goes against how they normally operate, or at least how they're supposed to operate. I want to show you this poll. You've probably heard this by now. A lot of Republicans are deeply, deeply skeptical uh, this election. 70% of Republicans don't feel the election was free and fair. I am one of them, although I'm not a registered Republican, I don't think. But I, I do have deep uh, reservations about how this was handled. Now, <laughs> just a few short years ago, if a newsroom got a phone call from a concerned reader or a concerned viewer with a tip, or perhaps an editor came in and said, my wife saw something on the way to work, guess what? Folks like these and their colleagues, they'd go check it out. They'd go see what they can find. Now, they're not even doing that. They're just saying, no evidence. It's all unverified. They're not even looking. And that's a real shame. Fortunately, though, it's not up to them. Look, they're not making it easier on us. But in the end, it is not up to them. And it's also not up to bureaucrats who want to leave Washington in a big way. Have you heard about this Chris Krebs guy? He was a DHS, Department of Homeland Security, political appointee. And I think he just wanted to, I don't know, go out with a bang. He said that this election was totally secure. Now, his job loosely involves election security from abroad. But that's not the election security we're worried about. The fake news totally embraced him. So Rudy Giuliani. This did not receive as nearly as much attention as it should. But Rudy Giuliani, as you know by now, is going to state capitals and making the case that this election was not on the up and up. And he told the legislators in Phoenix that this guy, there's something you should know about him. Mr. Krebs uh, was the director of uh, CISA D at DHS, and uh, he basically said that this election was the most secure in history. Is Dominion on his council? Uh, Dominion is, uh, was on uh, Mr. Krebs' Election Security Advisory Council. That would seem like a conflict of interest, right? Dominion, you've heard about them by now. All kinds of questions have been raised. Now, at this hearing, uh, we heard that Dominion, they were assuring their customers that Dominion systems were not plugged into the Internet. Uh, the colonel there on the left said that they have handbooks and manuals that exclaim that they are not connected to the Internet. Watch this. Is there substantial evidence, not only here in Arizona, but in other, other states like what we presented in Pennsylvania, that Dominion was in fact connected to the Internet? My team went back to the user's manual and looked at uh, all the instances where uh, in the user's manual uh, it tells operators to connect the Ethernet cords to the router uh, and, and it is, uh, the systems are connected to the Internet. One moment today, and it was very interesting. That's, by the way, is Colonel Phil Waldron, and uh, he knows his stuff. But again, there's essentially like a media blackout. They're not paying much attention to this stuff. 
Compare that to another colonel who was in the news the past year or so, Colonel Vinman. Remember that guy, that drama queen? He was all over the place. The entire country listened to his testimony because he got excited uh, when a friend told him about a phone call. Uh, look at that. Look at all the coverage he received. Now we're rigging up uh, Internet cameras in that hearing room in Phoenix. The mainstream media avoiding it. Totally, totally avoiding it. Saying that we are, well, there's just nothing to see here, folks. Nothing to see here at all. You know, human beings, we have a not very good track record of being closed-minded at very important moments in human history. We actually do. Uh, the solar system. The solar system. Uh, did you know for centuries they thought that the Earth was in the very center of the solar system? Actually, the center of the entire universe. Later, we found out that uh, that's not the case. We're one of nine planets, and our role in the universe is quite small. All a mystery, but this part we know. Copernicus read about this guy in school. You probably heard about that. He got in a lot of trouble when he, as a mathematician about 500 years ago, dared to say that the Earth was not the center of the universe. Uh, a while later, Galileo, with this telescope, essentially proved Copernicus right, and they threw Galileo in jail for a short time for saying something so crazy. This happens, folks, human beings. We are often, well, we just resist the truth. Another time it happened, more recently, and it directly affected me, the war in Iraq. Shock and awe. Remember that nonsense? Shock and awe. All to get Saddam Hussein and his weapons of mass destruction. Turned out, of course, there were no weapons of mass destruction, even though the mainstream media told us, believe it, believe the officials, there are weapons of mass destruction in Iraq. The New York Times actually led that charge. The New York Times greenlit the Iraq war. Here's a famous headline by Nicholas Kristof, still works there. President Bush has convinced me that there is no philosophical reason, no philosophical reason we should not overthrow the Iraqi government, given that Iraqis themselves would be better off along with the rest of the world. You know who else thought it would be a good idea to invade Iraq? Hillary Clinton, Joe Biden, and John Kerry. Uh, John Kerry, who uh, just got a job in a hypothetical Biden administration that I actually don't think is going to happen. Isn't that something? All right, so they didn't find weapons of mass destruction. They did not find any weapons of mass destruction. And then, you know what the establishment did when this colossal failure happened? They made a joke about it. Those weapons of mass destruction got to be somewhere. <laughs> Nope, no weapons over there. <laughs> Maybe under here. I was, I was actually in the room when that happened. Everybody laughing. That's when I knew I did not belong in that swamp. I had spent a lot of time in Iraq. And there the president is making a joke out of one of the biggest catastrophes in American history. I don't know if you can see the pictures, but he's looking for WMD under his couch, under his desk, under the rug. Ha, 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 ha. This is only a few months after we all knew that the war was going south in a bad way. They laughed, and who paid the price? Americans did. Working class Americans. Young man at a funeral. How about all the veterans who are living today with stumps instead of limbs. And the establishment laughed at it, laughed at it, and then moved on. Terrible. Folks, they like to forget things in the establishment and just move on, just like they really want to move on right now. Just turn the page on Donald Trump. Forget the affidavits, forget 70% of Republicans having grave doubts, just move on. I saw an attempt at that this weekend on the Meet the Press show. Uh, they just moved on. Take a look at this. From NBC News in Washington, the longest running show in television history. This is Meet the Press with Chuck Todd. See that? <laughs> no Donald Trump anymore. No Mike Pence. It's just these three. And Fauci, too, their favorite. They just kind of washed away the past. For them, it's over. It's they're they're on to it. Please, please, let's move on. 
No, we're not moving on. And this, by the way, this trick, I think is actually kind of creepy in its own way. They don't have that kind of power, but they're acting like they do. It reminded me of the Russians, actually the Soviets. They used to pull stuff like this. Let's go through some examples. And the North Koreans still do it. Somebody falls out of favor, they take him out of the picture. Joseph Stalin standing next to some guy he executed, they took him out of the picture. Who's behind Kim Jong-un? I don't know, some guy he later <laughs> probably had killed or whatever, he's not in the picture on the right. That's the way those systems operate. And that's the way the systems, well, they told us this is how totalitarian systems operate. 1984, you read that in school, right? George Orwell, the classic. I want to read you something from this book that I read, I think, in the ninth grade. Every record has been destroyed or falsified. Every book rewritten. Every picture has been repainted. Every statue and street building has been renamed. Every date has been altered. And the process is continuing day by day and minute by minute. History has stopped. Nothing exists except an endless present in which the party is always right. 1984. How about the statues toppling, huh? We've seen that a lot lately. Um, a lot of other things happening there. The party is always right. I do see the media giving all kinds of breaks lately to the Democrat Party. I did watch the Sunday shows yesterday, and uh, wow. I mean, they are buying the Democrat Party talking points. Um, that's all they need. They don't need any action or anything like this. Uh, Joe Biden made a big, big display of how he wants his cabinet to look like America, right? Take a look at this. You heard that. Uh, wants it to look like America. We have to make sure that our leadership and our institutions actually look like America. And that's the message that they reinforce over and over again. Look like America. And the media, they're already buying it, even before it's been done. And of course, just the sheer makeup of this administration will look dramatically different from President Trump's administration. Joe Biden has promised to have a diverse cabinet that reflects the diversity of America, Martha. And so far, he's doing that. Thanks so much, Rachel. I mean, so far, he's doing that? Uh, no, that's not true. Did you see the appointees last week? A uh, couple of white guys. I was wondering, where are the black men? Where are the transgender people? Where are, look, they said they were going to do this, look like America. No black men appointed to significant cabinet positions. Did you hear her say that? Cabinet positions? That has not happened yet. They're getting way, way, way ahead of themselves. Why are they doing it? They're just buying the talking points, buying the talking points. Now, one person was appointed uh, last week, and uh, seems like a very qualified woman, Linda Thomas-Greenfield. I have a picture of her right over here. Uh, she's going to be, um, if there is a Biden administration, again, I don't think there will be, but she's selected to be their UN ambassador. I remember Andrew Young, 43 years ago, Andrew Young was made the UN ambassador by Jimmy Carter, and they're acting like they're breaking barriers. Uh, I don't get it, I don't get it. I don't know why the mainstream media letting them off the hook uh, again, they said that they would do all this. I wouldn't call them out on it on my own, but they're not following the playbook. And you know who's noticing and who's a bit upset? Black Lives Matter, the far left. Yeah, they're already feeling cheated. They're already feeling let down. It's one of the many reasons why I prefer the president we have now. He doesn't make apologies for America, and he does seem to be, as far as I can tell, and unlike so many people, oblivious to race. Those that are lying about our history, those who want us to be ashamed of who we are, are not interested in justice or in healing. Their goal is demolition. We will never allow an angry mob to tear down our statues, erase our history, indoctrinate our children, or trample on our freedoms. Doesn't that sound great? Instead, Joe Biden uh, will do anything. He'll prostitute himself. He said that as a U.S. senator. He'll prostitute himself just to get the job. And that seems to be what he's doing right now. But Joe, I'm sorry to tell you, 
not your job yet, and I don't think it ever is going to be. You just watched Newsmax TV, America's fastest growing cable news channel now in more than 70 million homes. You can get Newsmax TV on your cable system or check your cable guide. And if your system doesn't carry Newsmax, call them, tell them you want Newsmax TV because we're real news for real people.